هاي ايفري وان ماي نيم از محمد فروم ماكس اوتوا سليم حداد اهلا وسهلا فيك معنا اليوم اند ثانك يو سو ماتش تايم ثانك يو ثانك ثانكس فور انفايتنج مي اون هيز سايد اوف ورك سليم بابليش هيز فيرست نوفل ان 2016 جوابا شورت فيلم ماركو which was released in March 2019 and was nominated for Best British Film, uh, film short, uh, short Film in 2019 at the Iris Prize. Welcome to our virtual space, Salim. Thank you very much for having me. I'm really glad uh, to be here. I'm not sure if you know that I came from Syria. I lived as well for a, for a certain time in Lebanon. I lived in Dubai. I lived in Istanbul. And I'm kind of just feeling that sense of like, you are kind of growing in every place and like you have this multiple even you do, if you don't hold the, the whole the nationality because because of the restriction but you still you kind of planted in all these places it's a simple question people ask it without even thinking they they ask you where are you from then if you say if you answer something oh i'm from here it's like no no where are you from from So I wonder, <laughs> I wonder how do you answer this question, and uh, what's your story with that? Um, uh, for a long time, I think the the complexity of where I was from really bothered me, and I would always always wish that I had the simple answer to the question that I could just give one place and then that was it. I I I was born in Kuwait, and in 1990, um, when Iraq invaded Kuwait. Uh, my family had to leave. Uh, my mother's Iraqi, my father's Palestinian. So, you know, it wasn't a very safe situation for us. So we left uh, and we moved to Cyprus for a year, um, a year or a year and a half. I, I can't remember really. And then we, we moved to Jordan. Um, and then my family moved to Kuwait for, for some period as well and, and moved back to Jordan. So I grew up primarily between Kuwait and uh, Jordan with a little bit of time in um in Cyprus. When I first met my publisher, who published Guapa, and I was telling her this and I was complaining and I was I was telling her, I, I just wish that it was simple and that I could just say that I was from one place. Mm -hmm. And she looked at me and she was like, that's very stupid. Uh, you know, there's nothing better than to be from a lot of different places because you get this much wider perspective. And it was so simple and like, but so, you know, Yeah. Uh, dictatorial, <laughs> but it is true, I think. One of the things that's like come to me when I'm seeing the movie and like every time I see it, it's just like I got something out of it and like a theme that I can even follow, you know, a thread. So it's it's covering many topics like xenophobia, fears from refugees, uh, talking about the immigrant system, talking about sex work, talking about sexuality and queerness, uh, feeling about the, the, the family back home and like the guilt maybe in a way, home mm. and adopting. My question is, Salim, how did you manage putting all this important topic in, in a short 20 <laughs> minute film and space? Honestly, like uh, how? The, well, thank you. Um, I, I mean, I, 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 I'm very glad, I'm very happy to hear that. Um, And I think also, and the film, and the film is quite sexy too. <laughs> it's very, uh, very yeah. like. So I think I think we should inc we should include that yeah, as well. Yeah, I, I call it as because, sexuality, queerness, but still can imply, yeah. Yeah, because I think I think there has you know I think I think these issues, if not done with a certain level of style, then you you could just write an essay about it. Yeah. And I think on a very practical level, the way this is done is a lot of revision. You know, uh, you, you you know you write a really shitty script, and then you spend a lot of time going back and rereading it and cutting and rewriting to just make sure that every single word in the script is has its meaning, and and so I'm aware that in a very simple conversation you can uncover a lot of dynamics, mm -hmm. and in my writing I try and do that to take these very simple interactions and then boil them down to their essence in terms of what does that say about, about different issues that I'm interested in. Is there any significant reason behind your choice or like the writing or even in the storyline that, that the guy in power, he's Lebanese and the vulnerable character is Syrian? Like, can you tell yeah, us a bit about that? 
that's a really good question. I wish I could give you a very uh, deep answer to it. But when we wrote the initial script, the character of Omar was not Lebanese. He was Egyptian. Mm. And then when we were doing casting for the film, the actor who plays Omar is Lebanese. And we thought, okay, it's going to be difficult for him to put on an Egyptian accent. So why not? Let's just make the character Lebanese. And then once that happened, something inside of my head clicked. And I realized, oh, actually, this is much more interesting. <laughs> it's changed parts of the script. And the very immediate way that it changed in the script was when Ahmed asks Omar, when the Syrian asks the Lebanese guy, where in Lebanon are you from? Mm. And then the Lebanese guy goes like this. Uh, because, asked. you know, in... Yeah, because in Lebanon, yeah. in Lebanon, where you are from in Lebanon is a very political question. Mm -hmm, for sure. And it kind of hints that Ahmad is running away from, from these sorts of questions mm -hmm. as well. Um, and I think there's, there's all of these dynamics as well, given the history between Lebanon and Syria. Um, but, but it was just a lucky coincidence that these things developed. It wasn't something that we had initially planned. I can't take credit for it. <laughs> I think it's crafted and played very well, even by the actor. It's it's important, and I apologize that I, I missed that part about like how sexy the film is, like and and that's why I've seen, <laughs> and I've seen it like more than once, and like I'm I'm sure I would have it as I put it in my even point of view as um, someone coming from Syria. I just put it in the archive uh, of like you know putting something in the map of like Arab exist, queer exist in the Arab context and the literature and. Uh, and one of the theme was like uh, a male sex worker. So uh, where did you want this message to go to? And where did you hope for it? Um, I, so I think for me, there's, I, I mean, there, I, didn't, I didn't write the film wanting to say anything in particular about sex work or about, um, about anything really, because I, I don't think that's the way that I approach my writing. I try not to intellectualize too much, especially in the early parts of writing anything, uh, and to just go by these emotions. And then in, in subsequent drafts, I start to say, okay, well, what is this trying to say? What does this mean? What does, what does this, what, what role does language play in the story? What role does, does intimacy play in the story? Um, you know, why, why is someone like Omar uh, going on Grinder and uh, choosing to to find a sex worker as opposed to just an average hookup. What does that what that what might that say about him? And then we start to sort of build the characters more and more that way. Marco is the pseudonym. It's it's the, it's the mask that Ahmed puts on, and you know what he what he hides behind for a variety of reasons and. I kind of like the idea of the mask being the title of, of the of the film. When, once you've seen the film, yeah. once you've seen the film, you know that Marco is not just a name. Marco is this is this other thing that's hiding a lot of baggage. And I think that's the same for both of the characters. They're both in different ways hiding a lot. I didn't want Marco to carry the baggage of people's guilt. And Marco himself did not want to carry the guilt of mm -hmm. Omar. So when, when Omar was trying to give him money, Marco was saying, look, this is not what I, look, I, I don't, get, don't put your guilt on me. I'm not going to be your, your avenue to feel sorry uh -huh. for yourself and me as well. And I think there's a lot of, the, you know, by doing that, he regained some power. And as well, he, he you know, the final line, in the film, I'm assuming that, you know, people have watched the film. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 final, the final line in the film where, where Marco is saying to himself over and over again, uh, he's trying to pronounce uh, Barcelona in the right way, right? And I think for me, that just shows that actually, you know, Marco is the one that gained something out of this, even mm -hmm. in a very cynical way. He gained something where he was like, you know, 
I'm, I'm going I'm going to learn from this. I'm going to sort of, you know, he, he hardened, it hardened him in, in maybe a bad way, but in another way, it also gave him something that he could take, a tool that he could take. It's a, does it ruin that? Like from our point of view, maybe there is like, you see this retinishness, you see this, like you have this diverse perspective, even you can be like in a different side, you can kind of even, I noticed that I, I start to build more empathy, you know, like around certain things. Um, so. I think, I think this point of empathy is really important that you bring up. I think it's true. It, you really do build empathy. And I think in the world that we're living in now, empathy can be, having empathy can be very lonely sometimes mm -hmm. because I think the world is increasingly becoming less empathetic. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think for, for people like us who maybe have foot, a foot in so many different worlds, it can be a very hostile world to be in, um, which is sad. I feel a lot of vulnerability even though as you're, you're putting that on paper. So thank you so much for being vulnerable and letting us feel that way even though. Thank you, thank you. I mean, what I, what I always think to myself is that, um, is that life is so short and there's no reason why we can't just be vulnerable because I, I i grew up with a with a with a father who was very hard and to this day is very hard and hides his emotions and judges everyone for the for the emotions and i i don't i don't want to life is too short to hide your emotions and and not show yourself you know i don't want to wake up and and my life is over and realize that i never actually expressed what i what i feel you know so it's it's really interesting, deep topic that um, I hope that's going to continue somewhere. What are you working on this day? That's going to be my last question before I leave you. Um, so I'm, I'm uh, working on my next book, which has taken a lot of time. Um, so I've been working on it for five years, but it's a really long book. And it's about the Iraqi side of my family and about art and Iraq and and it's also about exile and memory and, and how that transfers through generations. Um, so that's the broad theme of it, but it's about a lot of things. Uh -huh. So I'm hoping that I, I'm slowly reaching the end of that. And then who knows, maybe another short film, uh, maybe more short stories. We'll see. We are so lucky to have you. And, uh, you know, just oh, like even you. that work that you're going to be, it's going to come. Uh, the things that you have done already so far. Uh, but we hope to see you here in Ottawa. Thank you. I hope so too. I hope so too. Um, keep smiling, keep working, and keep us proud. Thank you so much, Hamad. Thank you. Merci, Salim. Take care.